Hello everybody, I hope we're all enjoying this fine weather we have finally been blessed with. In this series, we're going to be building a six string bass guitar from start to finish. Let's go. Now, if you haven't already seen the three part series I did on designing the bass guitar, go back and watch that. But as a quick summary of what we're going to do with this build, we've got a Buckeye Burr top for it and we have got a ash neck with a walnut laminate which is going to be sandwiched between the ash here. And the construction of this neck is going to be a through neck, which means it's going to go straight through the body and then the body is going to be joined onto the side of it, which makes construction, I guess, a bit easier because we don't have to faff around with adding a neck joint or anything into it, it's just stick the body on the side of it. So what we're gonna do in this episode is make that through neck, which means ripping this bit of ash in half and then putting the walnut between them, as well as two layers of veneer in there to add extra strength and a little inlay line. But when we do this, we need to cut this in half and then we're going to fold these up together like that and then put the walnut between them because this thickness here isn't quite enough, especially by the time I machine it down. So. Let's cut it in half. So these bits of ash are quite bowed by the looks of it. Now I've got them together like this, you can see there's a massive hollow between them like that, even though they are touching both ends. So this is something that we can plane out quite easily. But the last thing I want to do at this point is try and plane down loads of it and then it'll get too narrow. So to minimize the risk of this happening, I am going to cut this to its rough final size, still oversized, but just a little bit shorter because that's gonna bring these ends a little bit closer and it's going to make that gap a bit smaller. Now, as you can see, we've got a pretty nice book match going on here between these two components because this is the cut that we've just separated by one saw cut. So you get like a mirrored grain pattern there. So I want to keep that, which means I need to take that amount off either end. So let's see which one is the worst. I mean, for starters, I really like what's going on here with this sort of cathedral pattern going on. So I really want to keep that. Let's see if we can find anything on the opposite end that needs to come off. And I think I already have. Yeah, there's a pretty minging split up here actually, which I didn't even notice when I purchased it. Um, right, well, that settles it. <laughs> so one, two, eight, three is what we're gonna go for. And that is literally right on the end of that split. So in fact, we can take it a bit further. We might as well maximize what we've got here because then I have the option to take a little bit off this end if I need to. So, let's cut it there. Right, literally any excuse to use this beauty and I am on it. Excuse the noise. Right, so now we can think about squaring it up. Let's just see what that's done. <laughs> Not a lot, but better than nothing, in it? So let's see which one this is. Okay, so this timber is scooping down like this, which means that we need to plane this face on the planer first. So we're gonna make that the face side, and then we're going to make this internal one the face edge. So we will plane this side first and then get that against the fence and get this edge square to that one. And then we can thickness these opposite sides to 
the thickness we need. The reason I'm doing it this way is because if I made this outer one the face edge, when it comes to thicknessing this opposite side, it's going to change the grain match we've got going on here because I want to keep that book match as much as possible. And if it takes off more one side than it does the other, it's obviously going to affect that mirror pattern as it works through the wood. So by only taking two skims off this inside face or two skims on both of them, it should keep that mirror pattern there as much as possible. Now I fancy another montage for this. Let's do it. Okay, so that has planed up gorgeously. There was some like horrible tear out on it, but the spiral cutter on that planer, like it's got rid of it completely. But it is lovely and smooth. I will still be hand planing it afterwards because no finish off a jointer is good enough to be used as a glue face. You should always get rid of the little ripples left over. Again, it's a spiral cutter. There are less ripples in that than there would be on a standard three knife or four knife block, but it can always benefit from a little bit of planing. Now, what I realized I should have done at this point is just machine up the walnut laminate between the middle at the same time, because then I would have had all three bits ready to go, but I didn't do that. So, just looking around for the goggles that were on my head the whole time. Okay, so despite having a huge mess to clean up because I forgot to link up the extraction to the planar thicknesser, the laminates are now all machined up, so I'm going to clean them up with a plane. Also, what we need to do is cut the veneer to go in between the layers here. So I'm going to be using this Rapallo lacewood sort of stuff. It's very figured and we're actually only going to see the end of it, but the orange color of it, I think, should look pretty good wedged between the ash and the walnut. So I'm not gonna use this for anything. Let's be fair, I've had it sitting around for three years. I don't mind. So firstly, let's plane these. All right, UA numero seven. Yes. Oh, I'll never get an opportunity to use this anymore. All right, let's start with, uh, let's, I'm gonna mark them up first to make sure I actually plane the correct faces on these. So is that the match that I want? Got a bit of a spring joint going on here. Uh, I think it might actually be more sensible to have them going this way. Yeah, so now the hollow is in the middle. So if I put pressure there, it's gonna close up the ends as well. So it's less effort on all the cramps. Um, so this will be our plane for, I'm gonna plane that off. Let's just put a face edge mark on the top. And now I know which one to plane. What's important here is that I don't put these two out of square. I am going to be replaning it afterwards. Oh my lord, I do not believe my luck there. <laughs> I've literally maxed out the dogs on my workbench. Look, this is as far back as it goes. Like, that's it. Stick this on auto. So that does not go back any further. The wood is butt up against the dog. Woohoo! Close. 
Right, question is, is this sharp? Probably not. <sighs> Let's give it a go. Ooh, it feels pretty good. Can't remember the last time I used this. It must have been the chopping board, maybe? What's all the dust on it? God knows. Right, let's see how this does. Oh yes, it's sharp. Right, that was one full shaving. So now let's try the other side. That's one shaving. So it's flat along its length. Now we just need to make sure there's no bump in the middle of it. So straight down the middle. Let's do that for a couple of shavings, just to make sure there's one. Yeah, do the other ones. Cool, right, and now for the walnut. It's this one that needs to do both edges of it. Um, because it's quite thin, I'm being careful not to clamp too hard on this because that's going to cause it to bow up like that. So very, very light pressure to make sure it's registering flat against the workbench. Ooh. Well, we've got a mirror finish from it, so that should mean that we've got a good enough glue. Oh yes. You should be able to see that with very, very little pressure, you should be able to close up all of those joints with just hand pressure. You can see my hands aren't going white whatsoever, they are blood red, because I am knackered after that plating, but that tiny amount of pressure, all of it closes up. Right, veneer, meter ruler too short but oh well so let's lay this out okay so we got a bit of splitting going on up here let's cut that off oh well that's inconvenient oh I was going to get the ruler that I was holding in my hand anyway wait no I wasn't no I was going to get a knife that's what I was doing yes so cut this end off oh don't go anywhere Damn curly veneers. So down this end. Oh. There you go. This for a future day. Right, so let's see how this all glues up. What's going on here? That there. That one. There, like that, so sandwich one layer. And, oh, careful not to crush it. Lovely. Right, I'm gonna get some cramps on this to just check that there's no issues with it, and then we'll get it glued up. Spoiler alert, it's all okay. I've made a right old messy job of it with heavy duty cramps here and then hand cramps there, but it all closes up. So, the glue I'm going to use for this is undecided. I've got loads of Type Bond 3, which I know would be strong enough, but I also quite like cascomite, but cascomite's a bit of a nightmare to clean off afterwards. However, it is gap filling, but then there's not a lot of gaps on here, so do I really need to use cascomite? I'm just using it for my love of it. I think I'll use Type 1 3 for this. So then at this point, of course, I forget to turn on my microphone, but I was being very, very careful at this point to make sure I picked the correct card to spread the glue with, because I've got some decent loyalty cards in here. I don't want to ruin those. Didn't want to use my Nectar card because I'm absolutely killing my Nectar points at the moment. The bank card, despite being pretty worthless, I thought better of it. So in the end, I decided to settle for my Caxton card, which has about six Polish Zloty on it, I think. And these work great as glue spreaders.
And as you can see, I made a right old mess doing this, but still had time to do an Instagram story, of course. Gluing together the neck, making a bit of a mess on the workbench, filming right now. You will see this in the video when it's up. I don't even know what I'm saying. I should really be focusing on this. Um, <laughs> oh God. So then pop that aside to dry and then attempt the big old job of cleaning up my workbench. I pretended to not care, but secretly I was dying inside. Oh. 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 Ugh. Oh, gluey tissues. Right, there we go. Part one of the neck glued together. So to reiterate what we did in this episode, we cut the timber, shoved in a middle laminate, shoved in some veneers, glued it all together, made a right old mess on my workbench and forgot to turn on the microphone, which has been a common theme in a few of my videos so far. So I'll try not to do that again in the future. Uh, but, oh, I've got so much glue to pick off my hands. That was amazing. But yeah, as you can see, I made a right old mess on my workbench, but it came off very easily. Just a quick wipe down with some water and tissues and it's all fine, which is what I just trod on just now, actually. Some big, like, ugh. It's just minging. So, in the next episode, I guess we're going to cut the profile into the neck and make it look more guitar-like, I suppose. So, um, hope you enjoyed and I will see you then. Mm -hmm.